if you've never committed a sin, please pick up that rock, pick up that boulder, and hit me as hard as you can. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 incidents that got TV hosts fired. I want to apologize. I said I was traveling in an aircraft that was hit by RPG fire. I was instead in a following aircraft. For this list, we'll be looking at controversial incidents that resulted in the terminations of successful personalities. We're using the term fired loosely here to include dismissals, resignations, and the like, as long as it was clear that the departures weren't on good terms. Do you remember any of these moments? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Jeremy Clarkson This controversial English presenter has been hosting Top Gear since the late 80s. However, his tenure with the BBC came to an abrupt end in 2015. Been on the go now uh, pretty much seven hours. While Clarkson was filming in North Yorkshire with producer Ocean Timon, he was informed that the hotel chef had gone home. This meant a steak he desired wouldn't be coming. Steak! Where's my steak? This catering fracas eventually led to Clarkson punching Timon, who required treatment in a local hospital. Since the BBC suspended Clarkson and refused to renew his contract, they effectively fired him from Top Gear. Clarkson later settled a lawsuit with Timon and rebounded to create the Grand Tour for Amazon. Number 19. Sean Salisbury Following a successful football career, Grey Cup champion Sean Salisbury began working as an analyst for ESPN. However, he proceeded to leave the channel in 2008 amidst rumors that he harassed someone at work. The story that eventually emerged was that Salisbury had taken a very inappropriate photo of a part of his body and showed it to a co-worker. After initially denying these rumors, he fully admitted to what he did in 2010. Salisbury himself said it felt good getting it off his chest. While he disagreed with how much his actions derailed his hosting opportunities, it's unlikely he'll ever be invited back to host more on ESPN for his inappropriate behavior. Number 18. Nick Cannon In 2005, Nick Cannon began hosting a popular sketch comedy game show called Wild and Out. All right, y'all, it's a classic game we like to call Let Me Holler. But after 15 successful years on television, he ran into trouble when he made offensive statements that targeted racial and religious groups. Wild and Out parent company Viacom CBS quickly tried to distance themselves from Cannon and let him go. The TV personality issued a few apologies and made efforts to get to know those he offended. After working to repair relationships, Viacom CBS brought Cannon back to Wild and Out six months later. The network seemed to accept the actions the host took to make up for his words. Number 17. Mike Richards Everyone knew that finding a new host for Jeopardy would be tough. However, no one expected the media firestorms that would surround potential hosts like Mike Richards. I'd like to do a different category. <laughs> Let me check the rules on that. Uh, no, we can't do that. The game show gave a few big names their chance to prove they could lead Jeopardy. After a while, it was announced that executive producer Mike Richards would take over as full-time host. At the last minute, the, the decision was made for me to step in and just keep the show going. But his official tenure didn't last long. During his brief time as host, Controversial remarks he'd made about women resurfaced online. Shortly after Richard stepped down as the face of Jeopardy, he was eventually fired from his producing role as well. Number 16. Gretchen Carlson You've become a hero for so many women, and I can see you getting emotional right now. Mm -hmm. Because I never thought I was going to be in this position. Between 2006 and 2013, Carlson presented on the Fox News program Fox & Friends. She left the program in September of 2013 to host her own talk show, The Real Story with Gretchen Carlson. So now this story is definitely a, a chick story? This, this is, is why I'm going to read it? This is total woman. Oh, okay. But the truth was revealed three years later when Carlson filed a lawsuit against her boss, Roger Ailes. According to Carlson, she had been repeatedly subjected to harassment in the workplace. She was ultimately let go from Fox & Friends after lodging complaints about her co-host Steve Ducey and turning down her boss's advances. Headline time! Women are everywhere. We're letting them play golf and tennis now. It's out of control. You know what? You know. <laughs> you know what? She's out. <laughs> you read the headlines since men are so great. Luckily, history has substantiated Carlson's story, and she has since settled the lawsuit with Fox for $20 million. She is now regarded as a hero and continues to work to help other women in bad workplace situations. 
I grew up thinking that I could be anything I wanted to be in this world because my mom told me that every single night. Number 15, Mark Summers. During his decades on TV, Mark Summers has worked on Nickelodeon's Double Dare, various game shows, and numerous food programs. He was also tapped to host the revival of Hollywood Squares. However, he was fired before the show even began. In the mid-90s, Summers publicly revealed that he suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder. I really don't want to do this. I don't want to plump those pillows up again. I really don't want to wipe that sink out again. I really don't want to wash my hands again. But you can't stop yourself. According to Summers, rumors quickly swirled throughout Hollywood that his OCD made him difficult to work with. And at some point, the producers came to me and said, you know, you really do have to participate mm -hmm. as much as possible. And, and you do it because, you know, you have a mortgage and... Those words were allegedly enough to get Summers fired from Hollywood Squares and replaced. Luckily, he would overcome the stigma and find great success producing and hosting shows on the Food Network. Hi everybody, welcome to Unwrapped. I'm Mark Summers and today we are unwrapping the secrets behind Summer Snacks. Number 14, Megyn Kelly. Following her tenure at Fox, Megyn Kelly moved to NBC to host a variety of programs, including a daytime talk show. Everything changed when she had a panel discussion about Halloween costumes that had been considered offensive. You can't wear anything Mexican-based. No sombrero, no maracas. The conversation eventually touched upon the use of blackface for costumes. Kelly made comments suggesting that donning offensive makeup can be acceptable for certain costumes. When I was a kid, that was okay as long as you were dressing up as like a character. <laughs> Amidst a firestorm of controversy, she issued a public apology on her show for what she had said. Saying as long as it as it was respectful and part of a Halloween costume, it seemed okay. Well, I was wrong, and I am sorry. In wake of the discussion and Kelly's attempts to repair the damage, the show was swiftly canceled. Number 13, Paula Dean. Paula Dean became known as the public face of Southern cooking while publishing numerous cookbooks and hosting a variety of shows. Perhaps her most famous program was Paula's Home Cooking, which debuted in 2002. I have a fabulous healthy bean dip with sun-dried tomatoes. It seemed like she'd be a permanent staple on the food shows until June 2013. At that time, former Dean employee Lisa Jackson claimed the host made offensive racial remarks and fostered an uncomfortable workplace environment. The host ended up admitting to using racist language during the civil proceedings. I beg for your forgiveness. Although Dean didn't lose the lawsuit, the host couldn't recover in the court of public opinion. She lost many business deals and was completely dropped from her Food Network show. It makes sponsors very afraid. It makes businesses run. Number 12, Brian Williams. Brian and his crew were happy to report are safely back in Kuwait City after a harrowing ordeal. After joining NBC Nightly News back in 1993, Brian Williams became arguably one of the most famous news personalities of the last few decades. His stellar reputation was irreparably damaged on the night of January 30th, 2015. Williams told a false story about his time in the Iraq War. According to him, he was riding in a helicopter when it came under RPG fire and had to land right away. Uh, two of our four helicopters were hit by ground fire, including the one I was in. No kidding. Uh, but various soldiers involved in the event called Williams on his story and said that he was nowhere near the helicopter in question. Williams came under fire, uh, no pun intended, and was suspended for six months. Following the suspension, Williams was fired from NBC Nightly News. Number 11, Kathy Griffin. One infamous photo made it pretty clear how Kathy Griffin felt about Donald Trump and his policies. On May 30th, 2017, Griffin posted a particularly controversial image in which she held a mock and gruesome head that looked like the controversial political figure. The violent nature of the picture crossed a line for many. Following the photo shoot, Griffin's schedule was wiped clean. Her comedy tour dates were canceled, she was dropped as a business spokesperson, and she was fired from CNN's New Year's Eve program. She was also reportedly investigated by the Secret Service. The Secret Service are going to look at this because it's out there. Now, will they seriously put much energy into it? The answer is no. Did Kathy Griffin threaten anybody? No. And while Griffin initially apologized for the photo, I sincerely apologize. I'm a comic. I crossed the line. She went on to retract said apology and retweeted the picture during the 2020 election race. Number 10. Paul Pierce. Paul, riddle me this. Who's the better NBA 
player. That's easy. I can say that off the bat. That's me. <laughs> this ex-basketball star played 19 seasons in the NBA, his career spanning from 1998 to 2017. Following his retirement, Pierce began working as an analyst for ESPN, but his broadcasting career was spotty and became marred in controversy. Everything came to a head on April 2nd, 2021, when Pierce streamed a racy video on Instagram Live. The video took place at a poker game and showed a maskless Pierce smoking and drinking amidst scantily clad women twerking. They got a neck massage, you know what I'm saying? It was likely the last straw for ESPN, which is partly owned by the Walt Disney Company. They fired Pierce without comment, ending their tenuous four-year working relationship. He did release a statement, and here's his statement. <laughs> Uh, Number nine, Fred Willard. Well, the movie you went to see. Yes. Was it The Firm? <laughs> no. <laughs> was it Free Willy? This late comic actor was primarily known for movies like This Is Spinal Tap, Anchorman, and American Wedding. But he also hosted the PBS reality program Market Warriors. The show saw professional antique buyers shopping for items at flea markets and attempting to resell them for a profit. However, his tenure as host came to an end in July of 2012 when he was arrested at an adult movie theater on Santa Monica Boulevard. Let me say this. <laughs> it's the last time I'm going to listen to my wife when she says, why don't you go out and see a movie? On suspicion of lewd conduct. Willard claimed that he did nothing wrong, telling Jimmy Fallon, quote, If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, everything seems suspicious. Yeah. To avoid charges, Willard was forced to undertake a sex ed diversion program. Number eight, Pat O'Brien. Hopefully my headline is going to be Pat O'Brien gets second chance. This radio host and TV personality has been working in the field since 1981, covering numerous Olympic games, sports finals like the World Series and Super Bowls, and hosting the likes of Access Hollywood and The Insider. But folks, these are not merely America's games. They are the Olympic games. However, he was fired from the latter in September 2008. O'Brien was already on thin ice, having previously been demoted and replaced as anchor by Laura Spencer. I had to own up to some really bad behavior, which I was happy to do. But humbling it has been. I'm totally humble. O'Brien subsequently penned a mass email that he sent to the show's staff, writing, quote, Watching Anya and Laura pick out accessories makes the viewers want to vomit. He explicitly wrote, I'll get killed for this. And he was right. O'Brien was immediately fired. Number seven. Rick Sanchez. CNN anchor Rick Sanchez has been fired after making controversial comments on a radio show. Joining CNN in 2004, journalist and anchor Rick Sanchez eventually began hosting the news program Rick's List. But the same year, while appearing on the Sirius XM radio show Stand Up with Pete Dominic, Sanchez made highly controversial remarks relating to talk show host Jon Stewart. CNN anchor Rick Sanchez lashed out at Jon Stewart Thursday on the radio. He called Stewart a, quote, bigot and proceeded to state. I'm telling you that everybody who runs CNN is a lot like Stewart. And a lot of people who run all the other networks are a lot like Stewart. And to imply that somehow they, uh, the people in this country who are Jewish, are an oppressed minority? The comments earned Sanchez a termination from CNN. Number six, Phil Donahue. I think we brought a show to daytime television that they always wanted. And no one gave it to him, and we got lucky. And Perhaps the most influential talk show host of all time, Phil Donahue is known for hosting The Phil Donahue Show, which ran for 26 years from 1967 to 1996. The program is widely credited for being the first talk show to engage directly with audiences. In 2003, his MSNBC show Donahue was canceled. However, a leaked internal memo suggested that Donahue was fired for his public anti-Iraq war sentiments. I couldn't get over the unanimity of opinion on cable. The drum was beating. Everybody wanted to bomb somebody. It was stated that Donahue would be a, quote, difficult public face for NBC in a time of war. And his program, quote, a home for the liberal anti-war agenda. I just felt, you know, what would be wrong with having one show a night, you know, say, hold it. Wait a minute. Can we afford this? Donahue later suggested that his firing came as a result of General Electric, the defense contractor that owned MSNBC at the time. You see... GE owns Kitchen Oil of Colorado, which in turn owns JMI of Stanford, which is a majority shareholder in PokerFastLane.com, which recently acquired the Shine Hard Week Company, which owns NBC. Number five, Matt Lauer. Now late today, an explosive article by Variety describing alleged patterns of lewd behavior by Lauer. 
One of the most popular news anchors of his era, Matt Lauer rose to prominence on NBC's The Today Show before serving as co-host for 20 years. However, his long-term employment with the company came to an end amidst the Me Too movement. Fear crept into my life. I became unsure of myself. Any confidence I had was gone. For him, it was a conquest. In November 2017, Lauer was terminated from NBC after he was accused of misconduct by a company employee while they were working on the Winter Olympics in Sochi. This opened a floodgate with Variety reporting further allegations. Two more tell the magazine Lauer had a button under his desk that would automatically lock his office door. Journalist Ronan Farrow later claimed that NBC had long been aware of the accusations made against Lauer and that they had once killed a story exposing Harvey Weinstein after Weinstein threatened to expose Lauer and NBC in retaliation. Number four, Sharon Osbourne. I don't know what he's uttered that's racist. I'm not I'm not trying to slide out of this one. Right. I don't know. Tell me. Sharon Osborne has had a thriving hosting career after vaulting to cultural prominence on the Osbournes. However, that certainly hasn't precluded her from controversy. A March 2021 episode of the talk saw Osborne and her co-host debating Piers Morgan's comments about Meghan Markle. If you have one parent is white, one parent is black. Yeah, what what color okay. could your baby be? Let me finish. Osborne supported Morgan and publicly feared that she would be considered racist as a result. CBS conducted an internal investigation stating that Osborne's behavior, quote, did not align with our values for a respectful workplace. And that, quote, it was clear the co-hosts were not properly prepared by the staff for a complex and sensitive discussion involving race. The talk subsequently went on hiatus and Osborne permanently departed the show. How can I be racist about anybody? How can I be racist about anybody or anything in my life? How can I? Number three, Bill O'Reilly. This Fox News host has always been a controversial figure, and he publicly settled a harassment lawsuit with former producer Andrea Macris back in 2004. However, this was only the tip of the iceberg. In 2017, the New York Times reported that O'Reilly and Fox had settled with five different women regarding assault allegations and potential lawsuits against O'Reilly. After the New York Times devastating report on at least $13 million, Fox News and Bill O'Reilly paid to at least five women. When this became public knowledge, nearly 60 advertisers dropped their support for O'Reilly, and he was subsequently dropped from Fox News. You know, there was a sponsor boycott uh, engineered by Media Matters, uh, the radical left group, and the sponsor boycott uh, unsettled some people at Fox News. Just a few months later, it was reported that O'Reilly had paid Fox News analyst Lise Wheel $32 million to settle a potential lawsuit. All told, Fox News and O'Reilly had paid out an estimated $45 million in out-of-court settlements. There are billions of dollars at stake in business uh, deals, and uh, they made a business decision. Number two, Rush Limbaugh. I think he got a lot of credit for the defensive side of the ball winning games for this team. The late Rush Limbaugh was considered the most popular radio host in the United States, with his eponymous show being the highest rated talk show in the country. In the early 2000s, Limbaugh briefly worked as a football commentator for ESPN. However, he garnered controversy for comments he made aimed against then Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Donovan McNabb. McNabb airing it out for Deshaun Jackson. Behind the defense, a juggle and a touchdown. Limbaugh claimed, I feel like the media has been very desirous that a black quarterback do well. Mm -hmm. We're interested in black coaches and black quarterbacks doing well. After massive blowback, Limbaugh stated that, quote, the great people at ESPN did not want to deal with this kind of reaction and subsequently resigned from his position. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Billy Bush. I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> The nephew of ex-president George H.W. Bush, Billy Bush served as an anchor on Access Hollywood, hosted his own talk radio show from 2008 to 2014, and briefly co-hosted NBC's Today. He began his Today tenure in May 2016, but was fired the following October after the infamous Donald Trump Access Hollywood tape was released. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. This is the video in which Trump made his controversial remarks while speaking with Bush. 
including saying, quote, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Are you ready to be a soap star? We're ready. Let's go. Make right. me a soap star. How about absolutely. a little hug for the Donnelly? Just get off the bus. Like okay, hug, absolutely. Bush was suspended from today following the release of the tape and the resulting controversy. About a week later, suspension turned permanent and Bush was let go from NBC. If they feel that way, then I, there's nothing I can do about it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.